In the skies over Europe and the Pacific, speed wasn't just an advantage, it was survival. Every mile per hour could mean the difference between making it home or disappearing into the clouds forever. By the 1930s, engines were growing more powerful than ever, but America's fighters still had one fatal weakness. Their propellers couldn't keep up. They were fast until they weren't. And then one quiet engineer decided to change that. His design was called impossible, but when it finally worked, it made US fighters significantly faster. Before World War II, aircraft design was advancing at an incredible pace. Engines were growing stronger, airframes lighter, and altitudes higher, but there was a bottleneck, the propeller. Most early planes used what's called a fixed pitch propeller. The angle of the blades was set before takeoff. It couldn't change mid-flight. That meant a pilot had to choose, a propeller optimized for takeoff and climbing, or one for cruising at high speed, but never both. Imagine trying to drive a car that only has one gear. You can floor the accelerator, but you'll never get the full power from the engine. That's exactly what early pilots were dealing with. At low speeds, the blades would bite too much air, bogging the engine down. At high speeds, they'd cut through too easily, wasting energy. The result? Planes stalled more easily on takeoff and lost efficiency at altitude. By the early 1930s, engineers knew that the propeller was holding aircraft back, literally. They could feel it every time they pulled back on the stick. The power was there, but they just couldn't harness it. And that's when one engineer started asking a question no one else dared to. What if the propeller could change itself? Frank W. Caldwell wasn't a pilot. He wasn't even a famous inventor. He was a quiet, methodical engineer working for Hamilton Standard, a company based in Windsor Locks, Connecticut, that supplied propellers to nearly every major American aircraft manufacturer. Caldwell has studied mechanical engineering in the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, graduating in 1912, when aviation was still in its infancy. While most engineers of his generation ended up in railroads or heavy industry, Caldwell became obsessed with flight, the challenge of turning power into lift. By the early 1930s, while the world obsessed over faster engines and sleeker wings, Hamilton Standard was tackling the smaller, unseen problems of flight, the kind that could make or break performance and Caldwell fit right in. He wasn't chasing fame, he was chasing efficiency. He started with the simple question, what if a propeller could adjust its own blade angle while the plane was flying? Shallow angles for takeoff, steeper ones for cruising, all automatically. To most engineers of the time, that idea sounded impossible. It would mean designing a system that could sense engine speed and mechanically twist the blades in real time. That required precise hydraulics, perfect timing, and flawless reliability, things aviation technology just wasn't ready for. But Caldwell didn't back off. He believed if the engine could stay at its most efficient speed, no matter what the pilot was doing, the airplane would perform better in every phase of flight. In a way, he was trying to build a propeller that could think, one that could adapt instantly to the needs of the engine without the pilot ever touching a thing. While other engineers were chasing horsepower, Caldwell was chasing balance. And that obsession would soon lead to one of the most important inventions in aviation history. By 1932, Caldwell and his team at Hamilton Standard had turned their idea into a working prototype, a propeller that could change its own pitch in flight. The secret lay in a compact hydraulic governor mounted on the engine. It worked like a mechanical brain. When engine speed rose too high, oil pressure shifted the blades to a steeper angle, taking a bigger bite of air. When the RPMs dropped, the blades automatically flattened out. The result was simple but revolutionary. The engine stayed at its most efficient speed, no matter what the airplane was doing. It was elegant, efficient, and decades ahead of its time. Caldwell called it a constant speed propeller. The first successful test came in 1933. Pilots described the sensation as almost uncanny. The engine stopped straining, the climb was smoother, and power delivery was constant. The propeller adjusted itself hundreds of times during a single flight, and it did so flawlessly. By 1934, Hamilton Standard had filed patents for the design, and the U.S. Army Air Corps took notice. Test aircraft equipped with Caldwell's propeller showed immediate performance gains, faster acceleration, shorter takeoff runs, and dramatically better climb rates. 
One pilot said flying with a new propeller felt like getting an entirely new engine, but it wasn't more horsepower, it was smarter power. Within a few years, the constant speed propeller became standard equipment on America's frontline aircraft. What started as an impossible idea in a Connecticut workshop was now changing the way every military pilot flew. Once Caldwell's constant speed propeller reached production, the transformation in aviation was immediate and profound. Aircraft that had once struggled to climb off the runway now rose with ease. Planes like the Curtis P-36 Hawk and later the P-40 Warhawk showed a significant improvement in speed and climb compared to earlier fixed pitch models. But the real advantage wasn't just speed, it was control. For the first time, pilots could extract full power from their engines at every stage of flight. Takeoff, climb, dive, cruise, the propeller adjusted automatically, keeping the engine in its ideal RPM range. No more wasted energy, no more delicate throttle balancing under pressure. That small mechanical breakthrough changed air combat. In the chaos of a dogfight, a pilot no longer had to worry about losing power mid-turn or stalling during a climb. The propeller responded instantly, freeing the pilot to focus entirely on maneuvering and survival. By the time the United States entered World War II, nearly every new Allied fighter was fitted with some version of Caldwell's design. The P-38 Lightning, the P-47 Thunderbolt, and the P-51 Mustang all used constant speed propellers built by Hamilton Standard. These aircraft dominated the skies not only through superior engines, but through precise engineering. Every ounce of horsepower converted into thrust. In Europe, that meant long-range escort missions over Germany became possible. The P-51 Mustang, paired with its Rolls-Royce Merlin engine and constant speed propeller, could escort bombers deep into enemy territory, something no earlier Allied fighter could do. The Luftwaffe quickly learned they were facing a new generation of aircraft that climbed faster, dove harder, and simply didn't lose speed in combat. In the Pacific, the technology proved just as critical. The rugged F-4U Corsair and the carrier-based F-6F Hellcat, both equipped with constant speed props, gave US pilots a massive edge over Japanese aircraft. Faster acceleration meant better dogfighting ability. Greater fuel efficiency meant longer patrols across vast stretches of ocean. By the end of the war, the constant speed propeller had become so essential that no frontline aircraft, American, British, or otherwise, flew without one. It was the quiet innovation that powered every victory in the air. Some historians call it the most important unsung invention of World War II, the invisible advantage that allowed Allied aircraft to push farther, strike harder, and return home alive. By the late 1930s, the aviation world had caught up to what Frank Caldwell already knew. His invention had changed flight forever. In 1933, he received the Collier Trophy, the highest honor in American aviation. The award had once gone to names like Orville Wright and Charles Lindbergh. Now it went to a quiet engineer from Connecticut whose idea was giving Allied pilots the power to dominate the skies. The Collier Committee called Caldwell's controllable pitch propeller one of the most significant advances in practical aviation, and they were right. His constant speed system wasn't just a clever improvement, it became a strategic weapon. By the time the US entered World War II, Hamilton Standard was producing propellers on an industrial scale. Their plants in Connecticut and across the country turned out tens of thousands of constant speed units for fighters, bombers, and transport planes. At the peak of production, nearly every American combat aircraft, from the P-51 Mustang to the B-17 Flying Fortress, used a Hamilton Standard propeller based on Caldwell's design. Without that technology, the war in the air would have looked very different. The Allied bombing campaigns, the long-range fighter escorts, the carrier battles in the Pacific, all of them relied on planes that could use their engines to their full potential. When the war ended, the US government and aviation industry credited Caldwell's propeller with advancing flight as much as the jet engine that would follow it. His principles, self-adjusting efficiency, and balance between power and control became the foundation of modern aeronautical engineering. Even today, the DNA of his work lives on. Turboprops, drones, and even some hybrid aircraft still use variations of his constant speed system. Every time a pilot takes off with a propeller that adapts to the air automatically, they're using Frank Caldwell's idea. He may never have been a household name, but his invention made sure a generation of pilots made it home. And that's a legacy that outlasts fame. Frank Caldwell's propeller didn't just make airplanes faster, it changed how people thought about machines. He proved that progress isn't always about adding more power. Sometimes it's about using what you already have, but better, smarter, and more efficiently. 
During World War II, his invention gave pilots an invisible ally, a propeller that thought for them, adjusted for them, and kept them alive. And when the war ended, that same principle found its way into every corner of technology, from automatic transmission in cars to the adaptive systems in modern turbines. The idea of constant adjustment, of balance, became a cornerstone of design. Caldwell never sought fame. He didn't lead squadrons or give speeches. But in the silence of his workshop, he solved a problem that had frustrated the best minds in aviation. His legacy reminds us that history isn't just shaped by the loudest voices or the fastest planes. It's built by those who quietly refuse to accept limits. In the end, the constant speed propeller wasn't just a machine, it was a lesson that intelligence and persistence can lift even the heaviest challenges into the air. From the drawing boards of a small Connecticut workshop to the skies over Europe and the Pacific, Frank Caldwell's invention reshaped the air war and the future of flight itself. Yet his name remains buried in the footnotes of history, and maybe that's fitting, because the best engineers don't chase glory, they chase solutions. Caldwell's story reminds us that innovation often begins with a single, stubborn question. What if it could be better? Thanks for watching. If you enjoy stories about the overlooked people and ideas that change history, subscribe to 40 Shadows.